happy summer, my man. You, you don't like us, man. Why do you do this to yourself? Why do you do this? Like, you know you don't. Like, why do you do no, this? No, no, no. It's not about that. Football question. Football question. No, no. Question. Why do you do this? Like, it would be hard for me to really engage in someone I don't like or something I don't like. I'm just asking why. Like, why? you always on attack. Like, what, what did we do? Where am, I, where, where am I on attack today? Where am I on attack? I'm not going to give you opportunities to be on attack. Well, but I'm I, asking you why. Like, what does it do for you? Like, what happened? It's not, it's not about me. But what happened, happened to get you like this? Like, why? College football season hasn't even started yet, and the most controversial program in all of collegiate sports is already in hot water once again. For some stuff, that is a little cringy, but on top of that, for some much more terrible stuff going on behind the scenes. So before we get to the content, we just hit 900,000 subscribers, so the quest to 1 million subscribers has officially begun. My asshole of a brother, Flight Mike, is almost at 1 million subscribers, and I'm trying to beat him there. So we're going to be giving away copies of College Football 25 or Madden 25 to a subscriber that turns on their notifications on this channel. And now that we get all that out of the way, work. Check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Towards the beginning of last year, Colorado was a very enigmatic team, and they were quite fun to watch. Deion Sanders and his sons brought a specific swagger to Colorado. I mean, who could forget the back and forth between Deion Sanders and Jay Norvell, which eventually resulted in Colorado winning against Colorado State and Deion Sanders selling his own line of sunglasses. Following their first three games, things got really ugly in a hurry for Colorado. It's almost as if they were outmatched by every single program that was actually ranked. Losing 6-42 and 42 to Oregon, only losing to 8th ranked USC by a touchdown, before winning their final game of the season versus Arizona State. They had some close games against Stanford and Arizona, but when it was all said and done, this team went 4-8 and eight in Deion Sanders' first season. People memed Deion Sanders for this mercilessly, primarily because this team really liked to talk trash. But not only did they like to talk trash, they did whatever they possibly could to get social media attention, which is famously why Dan Lanning said this during their game. The Cinderella story is over, man. They're fighting for clicks, we're fighting for wins. There's a difference, right? There's a difference. This game ain't gonna be played in Hollywood, it's gonna be played on the grass, right? It's gonna be played on the grass. But regardless, you couldn't deny the fact that Deion Sanders was building something special, but at the same time, he was kind of doing it in a way that made him a little unlikable. And the first really bad controversy in regards to Deion Sanders, in my opinion, came all the way back in late April, when this piece from The Athletic came out in regards to the culture shift when Deion Sanders was hired. If you've missed this article, we've done a video on it before back in April, but to quickly summarize what went down, Deion Sanders was hired as the head coach of Colorado. 53 players ended up transferring, including Owen McCown, which was the son of Cade McCown. There was a bit of a sob story of how this entire team became closer together because they all sucked and they went through a losing season together before telling stories of multiple players who felt like they never really got an opportunity to succeed. The article said that Sanders walked into the first Colorado team meeting on December 4th, Tupac's all eyes on me on the speakers and delivered his first warning. I'm coming to restore, to replace, to re-energize some of y'all that are salvageable, but I'm not gonna lie, everybody that's sitting there butting a seat ain't gonna have a seat when we get back. They read Trip freshman said he didn't feel like he was being a dick about it, but he also did mention how every day felt like a tryout. It kind of felt like a reality TV show. It felt like it was us versus them instead of all of us together. That's the best way I can put it. The new guys were going against the guys that had already been there. It wasn't a good environment to be in and it wasn't a team environment. Now again, if you want to get the full story, I highly recommend you check out our video on it. We did it all the way in May. But the one part about this that went absolutely viral was when Xavier Smith, a former Colorado player, said that I was actually getting mad, like tears coming down my eyes, because bro, you never even tried to get to know me. He was destroying guys' confidence and belief in themselves. The way he did it, it could have been done with a little more compassion. And the funny thing about all this is, Shador Sanders went absolutely viral for quote tweeting this from The Athletic and saying, I don't even remember him to be honest, bro had to be very mid at best. And this was hysterical because this is the very same thing Xavier Smith 
Smith was accusing of Deion Sanders, and here was Shadur Sanders proving it to the world. There wasn't that much compassion in that locker room, but at the same time, it's football. It's meant to be competitive. You're not supposed to make sure that people's feelings don't get hurt. So there were two sides to this, but I have to admit, I don't think the Sanders family really handled it so well. I see, you know, Deion Sanders was posting the statistics for some of his ex-players saying, low Jesus. And we didn't really hear another story until an absurd story in regards to Coach Prime playing daddy ball and threatening to dismiss any player that missed Shadour's rap concert. Now, this story seemed very bizarre to say the least. I had some trouble believing it to begin with. Deion Sanders called this a lie and the Colorado Buffalo's YouTube channel even made a video asking players if this actually happened. But the story went like this. There was a Lil Wayne concert where Shadour Sanders was the opening act. And pretty much the story says that Coach Prime allegedly told everyone that they had to be there to support Shadour as a rapper. They were not happy at all. To be honest, it was nothing but a huge distraction and daddy ball was being played. And for the most part, after that, I just felt like crazy stories were being made up about Colorado just for the sake of clickbait and just so they could dig up a story. But now we are getting some more strange news about this program. And some of it is stuff that we've seen with our very own eyes. The first bit comes from a month ago, which I didn't feel like deserved its own video, but Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders were playing each other in college football 25. And something was said that you really just should not say when Travis Hunter threw his entire offensive line under the bus. Why am I getting chased by him? There Bro. we go. How? <laughs> the old line is realistic. Yes, very realistic. What do you mean? Tickets can't block for nothing. My favorite bit is someone retweeted this saying Travis Hunter is doing a great job user controlling Shador Sanders. He held on to the ball for 45 minutes, ran into a sack, and immediately cried about his line, which is just hysterical. And honestly, it's not something you should do. You should never throw your own teammates under the bus, especially when you're doing a live stream, especially when there's as much publicity as Colorado. But this is just the very tip of the iceberg. We would then get an article from Athlon Sports in August 2nd that's titled Deion Sanders' chaotic culture turns into locker room violence in Colorado. And the thing about this article is either something sus is going down at Colorado or Athlon needs very good lawyers. And considering that they were ballsy enough to put this out there, I think it might be Dion's program. Now for now, let's get into this article. There's been a sudden shift in attitude within the Colorado Buffalo's locker room. While the initial hype surrounding Deion Sanders has dwindled, he has brought more than his Louis luggage to Boulder. The urge urgency to win has increased as this season is expected to be the final one for Shiloh and Shador Sanders along with Travis Hunter. Coach Prime has reiterated that he's not leaving Boulder with his kids, but rebuilding a program from scratch isn't his forte, nor is fostering personal development among his players. Many programs pride themselves on nurturing talent, but that's not Prime's approach and it's becoming apparent. He desires ready-made players who can deliver immediate results. It's not about gradually building up, it's about achieving success right now. This approach has its flaws, and the foundation of Coach Prime's Camelot is starting to show its cracks. What was portrayed to the public as an outstanding program is missing the mark. Sanders seizes the spotlight in front of cameras, but then vanishes until the next media opportunity. Outside of these appearances, it's all about promoting his products and services. The real question for those skeptical of the hype is why is there constant turnover within the program? Which, by the way, very legitimate question. If people were just hating on Coach Prime and Colorado, you wouldn't see so many people leaving the program. So some players aren't suited for prime time, or at least that's what the CU staff wants everyone to believe. But conversations with those who've left Boulder reveals the true nature of the culture within the Buffalo's program. A few former players have spoken anonymously to Athlon, fearing retaliation if they went on the record. It's like a real life Grand Theft Auto video game, one former player said. There are many distractions with fights, guns, and money floating around. The environment is unlike any I've come from before. This is a crazy allegation because I understand not playing a player enough. I understand not developing a player enough, but where the hell did guns and fights come from? Another former player went deeper into the violent incidents within CU's football program, recounting three separate alleged occurrences over the past year, each unfathomable in any normal locker room. This insight sheds light on what happened with former 
former five-star talent Cormani McLean, and why his experience in Boulder was negative. Cormani was taking a lot of heat from everyone, said the former player. At the same time, Coach Prime was saying he was in the doghouse and needed to improve. Cormani was getting bullied by Shiloh Sanders. After the Oregon State game, Shiloh slapped him several times, which left Cormani screaming, I'm going to kill you repeatedly. After that, you could tell he wasn't mentally there. It's hard when the coaches you trust are calling you derogatory names on the practice field. This violence often seemed to come from personal vendettas, but not always. Jordan Seaton, another five-star recruit, was allegedly bullied into proving his manhood and picked to fight former Colorado University lineman Savion Washington. In April, the two were said to have exchanged blows, leaving both bloody. Witnesses described it as two bears scrapping for food. While bullying was also a common theme, there was another alleged incident involving a gambling debt between backup QB Colton Allen and wide receiver Caleb Mathis. Days after the Seton Washington melee, the son of Kevin Mathis, who is Colorado University's defensive back coach, was asked to pay Allen over a gambling debt in excess of $10,000, according to a former CU player. When Mathis refused, he allegedly proceeded to punch Allen repeatedly in the locker room with players and coaches witnessing the assault. Allen allegedly refused to disclose the matter. Fearing repercussions due to Mathis's connection to Prime's coaching staff, Athlon reached out to Allen's father, who also denied comment. Outside of the fights, which now appear to be spilling over to the field during practice with Coach Prime even encouraging teammates to square off against each other, the gun culture is troublesome. According to a report by Naples Daily News, Colorado commit Ebenezer Buzzi was arrested for allegedly threatening a woman with a gun six months before he was charged with misdemeanor battery stemming from an incident last year. According to the county sheriff's office incident report, witnesses saw Boozy forcing a girl between the age of 16 and 17 into a late model Ford Focus sedan by a male witness. Boozy grabbed the girl by the neck and the witnesses approached the car and asked the driver and the girl what was going on and the young girl was crying and upset. I gotta admit, man, the rest of this article is very, very graphic. If you guys want to read more, make sure you go check out Athlon Sports because this is the first time I'm hearing this type of stuff. Now, the crazy thing about this is this story isn't nearly as viral as something that Colorado did that was cringe inducing, which was this video. <laughs> No, we do. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> And it's kind of crazy that all this sketchy stuff allegedly happening behind the scenes isn't getting as much publicity as Colorado for some reason editing an incomplete pass to look like a reception. So let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about all this? Do you believe the Athlon Sports Report? Do you think that Colorado is set to improve? Do you think someone is setting up Colorado because they're getting so much negative press recently? I like to hear what you have to say. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping. Drop it or mic until our next upload.